Okay, so um, Supriya, uh, the plant budding, um, yeah, you don't know whom it is for. Uh, anything, any other details that you can add to it? Looked like a money plant. Was it uh, so money plant? I know it's it, it normally it's like a, uh, it's not a creeper, but it actually just twines and grows around that, right? Uh, something. Um, but anyway, um, it's a in-house plant, okay, a decorative plant. I see. Okay, so anyway, we'll just leave it at that, I guess, um, since uh, we don't know too much. Um, so Divya says uh, numbers eighteen. I saw numbers eighteen, and it's um, some instructions for the priests, right? For um, well, not numbers eighteen. I just said mm -hmm. it was. The number is... oh the number eighteen okay okay Num <laughs> the number eighteen okay uh, I'm not sure right okay okay so uh, is Rebecca there Rebecca can you uh, share something uh, if it makes sense doesn't make sense are you able to share is your mic okay? Are you able to text? Okay, so we, we'll move on. I think, um, yeah, we've not uh, been able to hear from Rebecca. So, we, so anyone else? Okay, so when we prayed and we asked God, so what did you see? What did you sense? Um, anyone else? anyone so you know if you if you go through the the list right like it could be a word it could be a sentence it could be some kind of a inspiration like in a, in a sort of impression in your heart it could be a picture right a sequence of pictures um, it could be maybe a something from the bible that came to your mind as you were praying right uh, or maybe a um, you know a personal experience or a situation or something that that brought came to your mind again. Um, so anything at all that you sensed as you were praying. Okay. Yes. No. Maybe. Um, if it's no, you can say no. If it's maybe, then we can talk about it. You know, you can explain it. Um, okay, right. I, I realize, you know, it's uh, it's like uh, maybe, you know, where you are, it could be probably a little bit noisy and maybe you're not able to pray. But, but this is something that um, I just want to encourage all of us, you know, as a... As something for us to grow in, right? When we when we pray in the spirit, when we when we pray to the Lord, to um, you know, when we are asking, when we are interceding for someone, um, to to be aware of what uh, what God is leading us, what God is you know putting in our hearts, right? Okay. Um, okay. Here's Georgia sharing something. I sense the spirit of God pouring into someone. I'm not sure who it is, but he's refreshing and replenishing someone. Okay. Thank you, Georgia, for sharing that. Okay. Pouring into someone. Okay. Now, these are words of exhortation, exhort, you know, edification and comfort, right? Some of them. Uh, so these are, well, we just receive it. Spirit of God, this is what he does. He refreshes. He builds, he strengthens. So, yeah. So, I, th I think we can just go ahead and receive it. You know, as a class, we can just go ahead and and receive that and say, Lord, I receive that outpouring. I receive that refreshing. I receive that replenishing uh, from your Spirit. Right. We can we can just do that. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. We receive from you, Spirit of God, even as you're pouring out, even as you're. Lord, restoring, replenishing. Lord, those of us who feel empty, who f feel spent and nothing to give, God, I pray that 
God, even as you replenish, God, that uh, the river of God will just flow, continue to flow, God. Yes, Master, we thank you for the refreshing. We thank you for the renewing of strength that, uh, that you bring about. We thank you. We receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, okay, uh, there's one more for Elisha. Uh, here's this uh, verse. God will, God will be. Okay, so Elisha. Okay, if there's anything that you want to share on those lines, you know, you could do that, Elisha. If I mean, if you feel that it resonated with you, but. Otherwise, it's there's an encouraging, again, word, an edifying word. So you can just go ahead and receive that. Right? The God will make a way. I don't know if you're facing something where it seems impossible, um, but here's the word that God will make a way. Okay. All right. Okay, so um, let's let's just move on, right? Let's move on to um, we'll we'll you know probably at the end of uh, end of um, the teaching sessions we'll spend more time just ministering uh, by the Spirit of God in the Word of Knowledge, in uh, Word of Wisdom, prophecy, and the other gifts. Right? We'll we'll try it out in class. So I just want you to be prepared to do that, right? Prepared. Um, to to receive, prepare to you know, step out. Okay, here's from Elisha. I'm attending a full-time ministerial interview on 23rd November, and there are many obstacles. I believe that this is with a seasonal message. Wow, praise God. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that and confirming that. Wow, awesome. I think God will make a way. Praise God. Awesome, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Let's um, let's uh, move on to uh, the next chapter, uh, which is uh, chapter twelve. Just a minute. Discerning of spirits. Okay, so this we this we see as uh, one of the gifts that are listed there. Um, okay, so just before going, yeah, you, you know, you see that uh, many times, you know, whatever God puts in our heart, right? It's 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 timely, right? It's accurate, like what Zelitoli shared for Subasis and uh, what Divya shared for Elisha, and uh, what was generally shared, right? Georgia shared something, and um, so we see that it's timely. We see that it's um, you know it's a timely word from God, and and of course you know some of it it's a word of knowledge, um, like in Elisha's case, and also in Subash's case, you know it was a word of knowledge. Uh, so uh, where God God is saying specifically about something that's happening. And now, even you know, even as we pray, even as we continue to pray, continue to share, and uh, even as we grow in this, you know, we become sensitive, we become stronger, we become uh, stronger in the spirit, in the spirit, in the man, right? So, um, and the Lord, you know, begins to reveal even more details. Now, if you if you study, if if you when you look at the Book of Acts, right, we we saw that. Um, um, to Cornelius, right? God gave an address. Right? God, God gave the address of where Peter was staying. Details like name, the entire address. So he could share that with his helpers and they could go and spot Peter, share with him and bring him back. Now, you know, you must understand that this was in a day and time where there's no... You know, no phones, no cell phones, no smartphones, no GPS, uh, no, you know, Google Maps. But God being so accurate and uh, you know, so specific, same Holy Spirit who indwells us, right? So as we 
continue on in prayer. You know, um, but the Lord reveals, and we begin to you know hear and understand. You know, not with the purpose of saying, "Okay, hey, hey I can hear from God. I, I can understand these things." You know, um, not to wear it as a medal of honor or a badge of honor, but really to to be a servant uh, again. What pastor was sharing this morning during the mentoring session or to really to serve um, to understand that we have a role to to know that we are vessels in the master's hand for his use so we um you know uh, to serve him in any way and purpose right? okay okay let's move on to uh the next gift which is um, um oops sorry which is um discerning of gifts uh, okay sorry discerning of spirits i'm sorry can you see that okay okay so we we see this again listed uh, I, I want us to just go back to 1 corinthians 12 and read through that list okay um let's go to 1 corinthians 12 And um, yeah, I'm uh, just reading from verse 7, chapter 12, verse 7. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healings by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another interpretation of tongues. Okay, so we see this discerning of spirits is something that is listed as one of the one of the gifts here. Okay, so we're looking at discerning of spirits. So what is a discerning of spirits? Um, we could say that it's the ability to supernaturally see or perceive into the spirit of people. Okay, uh, or it could be into the spiritual realm. No, that's the second thing. You know, to see, look into people's hearts. Um, to in order to determine, you know, what uh, what is motive, what is their motive, what is their intent. Um, are they speaking by the spirit of God? Are they doing something as influenced by uh, their own flesh, right? Or are they influenced by the evil one? Right? To to look into people's heart, spirit, um, so to know that. So, uh, so this is a gift. Uh, it also helps us to determine what is of God. You know, something is of God. This is not of God. It could also be to open our eyes to look into the spiritual realm to see, um, well, the activity of uh, activity in the spiritual realm. What God is doing. What the angelic ministry is you know are there angels ministering um uh, maybe is there something which the spirits of darkness the powers of darkness are doing to open our eyes to look into the spiritual realm okay uh, now that's a difference between uh, the gift of discerning of spirits and spiritual discernment you know spiritual discernment like wisdom when we say uh it is something that is acquired, you know, because of spiritual maturity and also our experience with God, our walk with God. And, and so, you know, we train ourselves to discern what is good. Now, that's spiritual discernment. What is um, Now, this is uh, not that, you know, this is a superna supernatural impartation or what God does in that instant, right, to look into the spiritual realm or to, to discern, you know, what is of God, what is not of God or to discern the hearts, the, the motive of people, and so on, right? Um, again, discerning of spirits is not being suspicious, critical, or judgmental. Okay, just a disclaimer there. Um, just because, you know, you have a suspicious bent of mind, or, temp you know, you know that, is, that is how you are critical or judgmental, that doesn't mean that uh, this is, you know, this is something uh, related to the gift of uh, discerning of spirits. Okay. Um, so this is not the gift of discerning of spirits. Right? Now, in the Old Testament, we see an example where um, Elisha 
and his servant, uh, they go there, they see the army, and uh, and Elisha's servant says, Alas, my master, okay, um, what shall we do? So Elisha says something, um, this is the response, he says, don't fear, those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elisha prays and says, Lord, I pray open his eyes that he may see. Then the Lord opened the eyes of the young man. Now, you understand that it's not, the, we're talking about the physical, right? Because obviously the Elisha and the servant both had their eyes open because uh, the servant could see. And he saw the vast army and uh, surrounding the city, horses and chariots. So obviously he could see in the, in, in the physical. But, but Elisha, and so, so did Elisha, but Elisha could see beyond the spiritual, right? Uh, so, so he prays and, and he asks the Lord to, sh to show him the same thing, to show the servant the same thing. He says, open his eyes that he may see. And then the eyes of the young man was opened and the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. Okay. So this is something that he, his eyes were opened. He saw into the spiritual realm. Um, in, the, in the ministry of the Lord Jesus, when... Uh, uh, with regard to Nathaniel, you know, the same thing happens. Like uh, same thing as in, you know, the Lord knows um, something of Nathaniel even before he meets him. Right? Uh, and as he meets him, he he says, you know, Nathaniel, in whom there is no guile, you know, an Israelite in whom there is no guile, there is no deceit. Right? And uh, so Nathaniel says, "How do you know me?" You know, this is like we are meeting for the first time. How do you know me? Yeah. So he, uh, the Lord is actually talking about something about his heart, you know, something about his character, and he's saying, you know, in whom there's no deceit at all. So it's like he's kind of scanning and reading his motive and intent and saying that there's no deceit. Now Nathaniel's surprised. Nathaniel asks him, "How do you know me?" And then the Lord says, "Before uh, Philip called you, you were under the fig tree, and I saw you." I, he saw him in the spirit. And and he saw and he kind of uh, discerned, uh, received what kind of a person he was. Right? And many times the Lord, uh, we read the scripture, Jesus knowing their hearts. He knew what was in their hearts, what was going on internally. Uh, and, and he says, you know, why do you think evil in your hearts? Right. Um, and so on. So, okay. So I'm just going to, there are several other examples as well. You can go through that. So, so how does it operate? It helps in recognizing the the, the kind of spirit that is operating. You know, maybe it's a, a evil spirit that is uh, causing some kind of a problem. So, you know, you're able to, you know, you know that it is not a behavior, normal behavioral pattern, but it's something that is empowered or energized by the by an evil spirit. Okay, so you're able to, you know, uh, pray, take authority. Maybe cast that spirit out and uh, and declare deliverance over the person, right? Um, also, to know if there are more than one spirit, you know, the, um, behind. So there could be multiple spirits in a person uh, who's being possessed and uh, who's being troubled by evil spirits. So knowing that, so that also that information also the Holy Spirit um, gives. Uh, and it's the gift of discerning of spirits, right? Recognizing false and true ministers of God, right? Spirit of truth and spirit of error in teaching. Maybe, you know, people are teaching some kind of heresy, some kind of errors, and well, spirit of God, uh, he, he discerns. He's the one who leads into all truth, and the spirit of God gives the person the ability to discern, right? Um and several other things, recognizing what God is doing in the spirit realm, um, recognizing Satan's plans, and etc. Okay. So how is the discerning of spirits, how is the gift received? How do we operate in it? Like we might receive, uh, like like we said, no, God, God can touch our spirit, God can touch our emotions, God can touch our, our body. Right, so he can use all this. There could be a check in our spirit. There could be an alertness in our spirit. Uh, maybe it's an uneasiness in our spirit, or maybe uh, something of you know that freedom is not there. It's like a constricting thing in our spirit. Then we realize that hey, there's something that is 
wrong. The guard is alerting me something. Uh, on the face of it, everything seems fine, but there is something wrong. You know? uh, so discerning of spirits. Um, or sometimes there could be total freedom, right? a sense of joy, uh, a sense of um, like closeness, um, and that also is by the Holy Spirit. So you're you're discerning that yes, there is joy, there is freedom, there is communion, and uh, you know there is no there is no deceit in this. Now it could be in you know in terms of relationships, and it could be you know you're with the body of believers, and you know this is what it is, right? So uh, that that also you sense in your spirit. Okay, a certain knowing also, knowing that a certain kind of spirit is operating, right? You're praying and you're praying for some person and a certain kind of spirit, okay? An evil spirit, you know, uh, they could be deceiving spirits. They could be, you know, uh, a spirit of lust. Uh, uh, so several kinds of spirit, you know, the, the, and the spirit is named because of the kind of things that they do. So, um, so it could be, uh, you know, something that the spirit is bringing about a spirit uh, of, um, uh, you know, whatever it, it's a, maybe it's an unclean spirit, you know, bringing about uh, causing that person to think unclean thoughts and, you know, indulge in unclean acts and so on, so, or a spirit of lust. And so to, um, to be able to know that. So why, so what do we do with that information? We move in that line. You know, when we pray or issue a command, we pray and say, okay, you, okay, this is the information that you have. The Spirit of God has put in your heart that there's a spirit of, maybe there's an unclean spirit. So you address that by name and, and say, are you unclean spirit? You know, you, I take authority over what you're doing and, and you know, I cast you out. You will leave right now in Jesus' name. Okay. Um, okay. So like we said, you know, it could be a visual God can open your eyes to see what is happening in the spiritual realm, uh, to see, um, you know, maybe the angels ministering, uh, to see the spirit of God doing something in people's lives, or you know, uh, the evil spirits tormenting, um, whatever it's. Uh, this, you know, God can uh, through this discerning of spirits, God can reveal that to us, and it's always for action, right? It's always to pray, it's always to do something, it's always to when it comes to this, it's to take authority, to step up, take authority, take our place, and move into action. Okay, okay. through dreams and so on. Um, what else? Physical sensations. Okay, you can go through that list. You know, there are many ways by which, uh, you know, these uh, we experience the discerning of spirit. Um, the thing is that uh, we, how do we proceed from there? We move on to take authority to pray to to minister to the person or maybe it's a group um so question here okay why do these evil spirits try to take control formally by penetrating the mind okay <coughs> formally as in um primarily yeah is that what you're saying divya oh. yeah yes yes Pastor. Yeah, the thing is, uh, you know, whoever has our mind has us, right? Because uh, we think and we act um, according to it. So, um, yeah, so maybe by leading us astray, maybe by through temptations, through, uh, you know, deceptions. So that's definitely a strategy of the enemy, right? To, um, yeah. yeah, so so that's yeah. what we see. Um, so he does that, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Pastor. Okay. Right. okay. So, so the thing is for us to minister deliverance, to take authority okay, uh, over the spirit, um, to um, to stop something from progressing further. Maybe the spirit is doing something. You know, there's been some kind of uh, you know destruction in the family, or some kind of uh, you know um, uh, things being destroyed, lives being destroyed. So to take authority and stop it right then and there. Okay, we take authority, we, we position ourselves, um, and uh, we we stand, take our place and stand, right? Okay, um, here's another thing. If God reveals the evil intent in people's hearts, 
then sometimes we need to distance ourselves rather than getting entangled uh, you know in like let's say god, god reveals and say okay don't get into that kind of uh, let's say a business relationship or um, or other maybe some kind of other formal commitments um, etc so we might have to distance ourselves and uh, and then ask the lord lord what next right so it's it comes as a warning it comes as um like the lord saying okay uh, you need to be careful right so uh, sometimes we need to do that um we may need to walk away from being in the company of certain people right again uh, we might need to step away distance ourselves and uh, we need to do that okay um refuse to agree with the prophetic word given with a wrong spirit you know that's the thing you know when you when you when you receive and you know that okay there's a wrong spirit in operation like just like heresy or a false teaching uh, you know if there is some kind of some form of manipulation some form of uh, you know something that is happening and the person is ministering is creating a lot of fear bring a lot of bondage uh, you don't have to agree with that word right because you know that the prophetic word uh, no matter how strong it is uh, it is redemptive in nature right so it is if it is just creating fear and bringing people into bondage and manipulative in nature getting people to do something uh, they don't they don't want to do and it's if it's for the benefit of the you know of the speaker uh, and so on you know you, the lord gives you that discernment through the gift of discerning of spirits so you don't have to agree with that word or say amen to that word or come in agreement with that right you refuse that word and say i you know i refuse to come under this you know i reject this word uh, that is being spoken i reject it i i do not uh, agree with it right okay so that was a discerning of spirits so we see that uh, you know that's again a very invaluable gift um, and as we as we pray as we uh you know you, and, and in, even in daily life right uh maybe you're in business maybe you're you're a working professional and the lord alerts the lord alerts you the lord gives you a check in your heart and uh, about the motives of people or maybe he just opens your eyes to to see what is happening right the lord will do that so um so thing is for us to understand what do i do now Okay, I, I receive this information. What do I do now? Now this is what we, you know, what we have seen, right? This is all all that we can do. Understand the authority, understand our position, and take our place. It's not the time to, you know, to retreat, but to really take our place and enforce our authority. Okay, and like we said, it is also it might mean that. you know one needs to separate we're not retreating we're not you know in any place anyway saying that um you know uh not taking our place a position of authority but we're saying okay as led by the spirit of god i'm not going to you know be part of this uh any further right a part of this kind of a thing that's happening uh, i don't want to be part of it i'm not going to be i'm going to you know uh, part of this deception or part of something that's happening that's not uh, conducive so the lord has put this and i don't want to continue further in it right you make a choice you make a decision right? till the lord leads you again right and uh that's the other side of it you know what you the other what you sense as an alertness what you sense as a check and so on right? at the same time we could also sense a great sense of freedom liberty right uh, uh, in the spirit right it need not be something always constraining it can be a great sense of freedom and in and if that is the case you you move with it right you go confidently and engage and uh, and be part of uh, what is happening as spirit of god leads so spirit of god leads sorry so that is something that we can uh, do right so any uh, any questions on this before we go further uh, into gifts of healings yeah divya go ahead please 
Uh, I, I just had a question on this uh, distancing from, you know, those um, whom we think that uh, they are. Um, so uh, in such cases, like, uh, how do we handle uh, if you know we we try to distance, but uh, there is manipulation, um, or you know, uh, so how can we handle such such uh, situations? Yeah, thank yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. I think um, we can just politely and firmly just tell the person or maybe the organization. You know, uh, I'm sorry. I, you know, I just like. I don't want to be associated anymore or you know, I can just very firmly say that um, obviously there will be follow-up there will be you know from such a in such a in such cases you know why why not and, and that kind of thing but then um, you know you, you continue to pray through that you know um, just want to say uh, uh, you know add a few few more remarks to it you know sometimes what happens is like we are not comfortable in a way uh, the Lord moves or Lord does certain things. And then uh, because it's outside of our comfort zone, like we, we might come to certain conclusions, you know, like maybe uh, I come from a certain church background where it's all, you know, it's all very quiet and reverential and, uh, you know, liturgical and so on. And I uh, come to an environment where uh, this, you know, people are just worshiping loudly and singing loudly and crying out loud and and maybe people are praying for each other and you know people are uh, you know uh, coming overwhelmed by the presence of the presence of god and sitting down or lying down or, you know it it seems very offensive to my senses right so um so i i might make form certain conclusions and i did you know as a, from personal example i i was very very you know not very uh, this thing when it came to certain outward manifestations of you know worship and and all that so uh, so sometimes we we hesitate in that sense so that is not uh, you know we need to be careful you know it's uh, is it god you know showing me leading me telling me or is it my own fears my own you know uh, me wanting to stay in my comfort zone so that's that's something right uh, but uh, but the lord will give confidence we know that right uh, the lord will give confidence the lord will um, give us assurance and and uh, when he leads right it is uh, we we sense it in our spirit right we know in our spirit so so that's the thing so to to be able to you know uh, make that distinction um, but to answer your question, you know, again, um, yes, there might be attempts to, you know, I'm just talking about maybe, maybe it's an organization, maybe it's a ministry, maybe it's, a, you know, some kind of a, maybe a business deal, maybe it's some kind of a, um, thing that, um, yeah, even in a kind of a professional setup, you know, but the Lord has given you a check in your spirit that it's not something, there's no freedom. You know, it's everything seems okay, uh, but there's no freedom in uh, your spirit. So uh, outside, you know, outwardly it's all fine, but there's no freedom in the inner man. So that means that it's good to wait on the Lord and get a confirmation. And then, um, yeah, when there's persistence to come back and to be part of it, then you just need to be firm and polite and loving and say, you know, you've made a decision and hopefully that will you know, help solve things. Sure, sure, Pastor. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay, so then let's move on. Uh, any other questions? If there's any other question, um, we'll look at that. Okay, otherwise we'll move on to, uh, you know, the next chapter, chapter 13, which is uh, gifts of healings. Okay, gifts of healings uh, that we see listed as one of the, uh, one of the gifts, right? The old... Uh, Old King James and I think even the New King James uh, refers to it uh, to it to it as gifts of healings, right? Uh, plural, um, in different kinds of healings. Um, so that is something that we see. So what is it? You know, it means that yes, God has actually designed our body to heal itself. Right? You there's a cut and then you see that over over a time uh, if something is bleeding 
you know, the body is designed to coagulate, bleed, and then stop and then heal. Um, so we, uh, and also, well, we know that, um, you know, the medical science also helps in healing. There's medicines and so on, to which helps help us uh, help our body to heal, help the mind to heal. Um, now, the gift of healing is not the same as that, right? So it is. We're not saying that a, a medical doctor has the gifts of healings, right? We're not. Uh, we're not saying that because it's different. Well, uh, definitely, you know, uh, a doctor can through his or her experience and whatever learning they have uh, and they can you know prescribe a medicine or treatment and that will help in the healing of the body right uh, but this is um, uh, is a supernatural work of god which is resulting in which results in maybe physically healing a person emotionally healing a person right uh, it's the work of the Holy Spirit, and it's a gift of the Holy Spirit to bring about change in the body and mind, body and emotions of the person. Right. So, um, yeah, the problems in the body can be a variety of reasons. Right. Uh, it could be something that uh, affects us at birth. It could be something genetic. It could be because of abuse, you know, substance abuse or neglect of the body. Uh, it could be because of uh, some accident or, you know, related injuries, um, so, so many things. And it could also be something that the, the enemy does, right? We read about the spirit of infirmity that the Lord Jesus, you know, because of which the, and the Lord Jesus cast her because of which the woman was bent, right? So, um, so, um, so it could be several reasons, but, um, we see that God heals all. Okay, we see that the Lord heals all, and the gifts of healings is uh, released to bring about healing for all kinds of these symptoms and conditions. Okay, so how does uh, supernatural healing take place? Okay, uh, well, to understand you know, how does uh, supernatural healing um, take place uh, through a person who prays for a person and and so on. You know, we see that it's first of all through personal faith in God and in his word. Okay. So I receive his word, his word on healing, what God says about himself, that he is Jehovah Rapha, he's the healer, that Isaiah 53 verses 4 and 5, that he you know, took my sin, my sickness, my pain, everything on the cross, and by his stripes I'm healed. So uh, I look at the ministry of Jesus. Every word that talks about how Jesus went about healing all who were sick. And through that, you know, when I meditate on his word, that produces faith in my heart. Right? So I personally extend faith in God, in his ability to heal, and what he said about healing, and because of which I, I I receive healing for my body or receive healing, you know, through my personal faith in God and his word. Secondly, it is through healing, anointing and the gifts of healings. Now, gifts, that is what we are looking at, right? It is through the healing, anointing and the gifts of healings, meaning, um, you know, if you can look at this chart. Um, let me just, yeah, okay. So um, healing anointing, it could be through an individual and where healing is uh, administered to the sick, ministered to the sick. So in this case, you know, um, well, it's good if the person who's unwell, you know, they are taught the word and they, uh, they receive the word and they are built up in faith and so on. You know, as in the first case, through personal faith, they receive healing. Um, however, there might be cases where they do not have the faith, right? But because of the uh, healing anointing and the gifts of healing that is related, uh, that is released at that moment, the person is healed. Right? And uh, whether they had faith or not becomes irrelevant. That they, they just feel they're healed. And thirdly, it is also through God's presence and glory, right? sovereignly. The presence of God is there, and we know where the presence of God is. There is the power of God, and uh, maybe you know, in a, in an attitude of uh, worship or an atmosphere of you know praise and worship that's happening there, and the presence of God uh, and the power of God is present. Um, 
and there is healing that happens right and we see that the person didn't even pray and ask god but was just in the presence of god and the glory of god uh, was present to heal okay there was a sense of um well desire expectancy faith that was there of course but it was just the presence of god sovereignly the person got healed okay so so we can um learn about all this and of course you can read the book ministering healing and deliverance you can download the book and i think you you will also be learning about this in the second uh, second year about healing and deliverance right so so we see examples of this in the old testament well abraham prayed for abimelech his wife made servants and they all you know they they were barren and they now they bore children and god reveals himself as the healer um you know several scriptures here uh, which talk about you know psalm 105 verse 37 he brought them out with silver and gold and there was none feeble among his tribes you know what a testimony right Nehemiah 9.21, again, testifying of what God did. 40 years you sustained them in the wilderness. They lacked nothing. Their clothes did not wear out, and their feet did not swell. Their feet did not swell. Um, Psalm 107, verse 20, He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. He sent his word and healed them. And several other you know, examples of... Um, of healing that we see in the Old Testament, right? And in the New Testament, again, we see the Lord Jesus healing people um, in his ministry, right? In, he did it in several ways. People touched him. He laid hands on them. He spat on the ground, you know, made a made clay, <coughs> excuse me, uh, and applied it. And people were healed and so on. So we... We see that the, the Lord Jesus uh, ministered in all these ways. And he, he left an example for the early church, uh, the disciples, and for us to walk in. The early church walked in it. Right? We see when we looked at the book of Acts, we, we see that, that uh, they ministered in these ways. Okay. <coughs> I'm sorry. Uh, okay, we're going to stop here and pick it up in the next class. We'll uh, more about healing and uh, about gifts of healing and then also we'll also pray and uh, expect god to uh, move in our midst and release gifts of healings uh, for maybe you know conditions that we've had for a long time nagging conditions and so on right so we'll do that okay we'll stop here and yeah thank you so much have a great uh, weekend Okay, God bless you guys. We'll catch up next week. Bye-bye.